There's nothing like stripped out threads to cause a delay of a project. The question is, which process of repairing those stripped out threads is the best? Let's get the testing underway and see which process is the best. In the first test, we'll measure the maximum torque load for each thread repair brand. Then we'll see which brand offers the most holding strength. For the testing, we'll be using some half inch by two inch aluminum flat stock. I'm gonna go ahead and drill and tap this half inch aluminum stock with a 1764 drill bit and then we'll tap it for eight millimeter threads. To get the tap started straight, I went ahead and installed the tap in the drill press. Once it's started, I'll remove it from the drill press and we'll continue tapping the hole. Aluminum is pretty soft and the use of cutting oil isn't necessary for just one hole. However, I'll be tapping quite a few holes, so I'll go ahead and use some cutting oil. Okay, the bolt threaded in very nicely. All right, I'm gonna get busy and make 47 more test pieces. To prepare the test pieces, I'll first drill 47 holes using a 1764 drill bit, and then I'll tap the threads for each test piece. All the test pieces have been drilled and tapped. So let's go ahead and strip out all 48 test pieces one at a time. Let's see how much torque it takes to strip out the threads. 347 inch pounds. Okay, let's test this again. This time, 305 inch pounds. So for our control, an eight millimeter bolt with a 1.25 thread pitch is stripping out at 300 to 350 inch pounds. This test piece is completely stripped out. So let's see how much torque it takes to rotate the bolt 360 degrees. Okay, zero inch pounds, this is completely stripped out. All right, all 48 test pieces are properly stripped out. All the test pieces have been cleaned with brake parts cleaner. Obviously the experience level of viewers varies quite a bit. So one question you might ask is, well, how does a bolt get stripped out? One very common way is what I just demonstrated by over tightening a bolt. Another common cause is corrosion. When corrosion forms, just removing the bolt can cause a lot of damage to the threads. Cross threading a bolt occurs when the threads of the bolt are not properly aligned with the threads on the workpiece. That causes a lot of damage to the threads. The least expensive repair process that I've come across for stripped out threads is just using a piece of copper wire. This definitely isn't a proper repair, but it could work as a temporary fix. The first step is to strip away the insulation from the copper wire. Then remove about an inch of the copper wire. Just place the copper wire into an area with damaged threads and begin tightening the bolt. If it doesn't become snug, you might have to add more copper wire. Copper is softer than aluminum and steel and it fills the void left behind from the damaged threads. It's definitely a lot better now than it was before. At a price of $6.48, what about just using Loctite Thread Locker, the Red 271? It claims to be permanent, heavy duty. It only takes 10 minutes. The Loctite is made in USA. Loctite is a thread locker, not a thread repair product, but if the bolt is going to a bracket or some type of fixture that doesn't require a lot of clamp load, why not just use red thread locker to hold it in position? JB Weld typically costs around five to six dollars, but this is the pro size container and it's only 14, so why not just use JB Weld for some thread repair? It claims to have the world's strongest bond, 5,020 PSI. It fully cures in 15 to 24 hours. Steel reinforced epoxy. The JB Weld is made in USA. Squeeze equal parts from each tube onto a disposable surface and mix thoroughly. Apply with appropriate tool in an even coat. Sets in four to six hours, cures in 15 to 24 hours. Allow four to six hours before handling and 15 hours before putting object back to use. Okay, the JB Weld is fully cured, so let's go ahead and drill and tap this, and then we can go ahead and install the bolts. If you're using copper or Loctite, you don't need to know the thread pitch. However, for most thread repair kits, you will need to know the right bolt size as well as the thread pitch. You can find a thread pitch tool like this one at most auto parts or hardware stores. The threads are not properly aligned with the tool, so let's try a different thread pitch. The tool is now fitting nicely, so 1.25 is the proper thread pitch. The bolt's not exactly eight millimeters, but it's very close. Since we're using an eight millimeter tap with a 1.25 thread pitch, we need to figure out what size of twist drill to use. There are lots of online charts that you can access for free and we need a 1764 twist drill. Let's go ahead and tap new JB Weld threads into the test piece. The JB Weld actually looks pretty good. The bolt is threading into the new JB Welded threads nicely. At a price of only $20 is this HHIP thread repair kit. It's designed specifically for an eight millimeter fastener with a 1.25 thread pitch. The kit does not come with instructions, but it does come with everything needed to make a repair except for a drill. Twist drill bit, eight millimeter tap, the tool used to install the thread repair insert, and the punch which is used to remove the little metal tab. The kit comes with 25 repair inserts. HHIP is made in China. The first step is to drill out the damaged threads using the twist drill that came with the HHIP kit. Step two is to use the tap that came with the kit to cut the new threads for the insert. Step three is to use the insert tool to drive the thread repair kit insert into the test piece. Now that the insert's in place, we need to use the punch in order to break off the metal tab on the insert. Okay, the repair is finished and the bolt is fitting nicely. At a price of $25, you can buy the actual name brand, the Helicoil brand thread repair kit. Stanley Engineered Fastening, tools made in USA and China. The Helicoil kit includes a tap. It also includes a repair insert tool. And the kit also includes 10 repair inserts. If you plan to use a Helicoil kit, you're gonna need a twist drill as well as a punch. 
The Halo Coil brand comes with a very nice set of instructions. The first thing you have to do is drill out the damaged threads. Unfortunately, the Halo Coil brand does not come with a drill bit, so you'll need the right drill bit for the repair. Stamped right on the Halo Coil tap, it says use a 2160 force drill. The second step is the tap. The third step is to install the thread insert. Top of the insert must be a quarter to half a turn below the top surface. After you've got the thread insert installed, go ahead and use the punch of the rod to break the tang at the notch at the bottom of the coil. The punch of the rod has to have a square end. The repair is finished and the bolt fits nicely. If you don't have access to a lot of tools, why not just use this Loctite PC3967 Strip Thread Repair Kit? Now, the nice thing about this kit is it can be used with just about any size faster, not just a specific size like the other brands. However, there are some temperature limitations from minus 65 to up to 300 degrees Fahrenheit, 350 degrees intermittent. It works with most metals, including aluminum, iron, steel, brass, magnesium, and copper. The Loctite Thread Repair Kit is made in USA. Strip thread release agent, two-part epoxy system, and it comes with a spatula. Clean the surface to be repaired. Surface should be at room temperature. Shake the release agent well. Using brush and cap top, apply a thin, even coating of release agent directly onto the entire surface of the bolt or screw. If the female component is a through hole, place tape on the end to contain the Loctite PC3967 compound. Depress plungers and dispense equal parts of both number one and number two materials onto a clean surface. Mix the epoxy together until uniform in color. Fill the female component with the mixed repair material. Working time is three to five minutes before gel at 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Thread coated fastener into compound, wait five to 10 minutes and remove fastener. Allow compound to cure for 30 minutes before use. It's been right at 10 minutes, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove the bolt and take a look at the threads. The product definitely seems to have done a good job forming the threads. Some viewers have suggested that the Easy Lock system is actually better than the Helicoil system, but it is pretty expensive at $60. Inserts made in USA, tools made in China. The kit includes 10 inserts, 13 30 seconds twist drill, 12 millimeter tap. The driver has a couple of notches to secure the insert. Simple one, two, three installation. Drill hole with included drill. Tap the hole with the included tap. Thread insert into place with the included driver. I really like the way the Easy Lock thread insert is seated into the test piece. The Easy Lock offers a very nice fit. And the most expensive repair kit we'll be testing costs $100 and is made by TimeCert. The TimeCert brand is made in USA. The time cert comes with five inserts. The time cert comes with the drill, the counterbalance tool, tap. This is the driver for the insert. The first step is to drill out the old threads, keeping the drill square to the surface of the hole. The next step is to tap new threads with the full depth of the hole. Then you use the counterbore. When counterboring, use light down pressure with slow to medium speed. Counterbore the hole to the full depth permitted by the tool. One really nice feature about the time cert is that it has a flange on top of the insert, which keeps the insert locked into place and from moving down into the hole. Also, the time cert is self-locking. Oil threads of the driver tool. While screwing the driver through the insert, the driver will start to tighten up as it expands the bottom few threads of the insert. Continue until the driver tool loosens up. Remove driver, repair is complete. I really like the self-locking design of the time cert. It definitely seems to be a great choice for a part that experiences frequent use, such as an oil drain plug. Several of the products require a cure time and it's been right at 36 hours, so all the products should be ready for testing. It takes between 300 and 350 inch pounds of torque to cause the aluminum threads to strip out. So let's see how the copper thread repair holds up. I'll keep tightening the bolt until the repair fails or the bolt breaks. Unfortunately, the copper didn't work out too well. Zero inch pounds on the first sample. The second sample actually did better at 72 inch pounds, but that's still not too impressive. The third copper repair didn't work out too well either at zero inch pounds. Let's see if the Loctite red thread locker performs any better than the copper repair. 138 inch pounds on the first test piece. The second thread lock repair held up even better at 185 inch pounds. The third test piece was down quite a bit to 97, so there was quite a bit of variance with the Loctite high strength thread locker. Testing JB Weld. JB Weld did fairly well on the first test piece at 148 inch pounds. It actually did quite a bit better on the second test piece at 372 inch pounds. It was down to 98 inch pounds on the third sample, so the results with JB Weld varied quite a bit. Testing HHIP, and the HHIP isn't giving up like the others. And the bolt finally snapped at 576 inch pounds. So HHIP is stronger than the control. It takes between 300 and 350 inch pounds of torque to cause the aluminum threads to strip out. And the bolt on the second test piece broke at 507 inch pounds. And the third test piece did nearly as well as the second at 500 inch pounds. So the HHIP thread insert actually provided a stronger set of threads than the original aluminum threads. Let's test the Helicoil brand next. And the first bolt broke at 493 inch Inch pounds. The second bolt performed nearly the same at 483 inch pounds. And a third helicoil repaired test piece broke at 442 inch pounds. So both the HHIP and the helicoil repaired threads are a lot stronger than the original aluminum threads, and the repaired threads outlasted the bolts on all of the test pieces. Testing the Loctite epoxy strip thread repair product next. And the Loctite repaired thread stripped out at 139 inch pounds on the first test piece. 
On the second test piece, the threads let go at 83 inch pounds. The third test piece did the best yet at 177, so the threads stripped out in all three test pieces. Let's test the easy lock next. And the bolt really held on for a long time and finally broke at 706 inch pounds. The second test piece did even better with the bolt finally breaking at 712 inch pounds. The third bolt did slightly better at 717 inch pounds, so very consistent results for easy lock. Testing the time cert. And the bolt finally snapped at 571 inch pounds on the first test piece. The bolt broke on the second test piece at 492 inch pounds. The time cert outlasted the bolt on the third test piece with the bolt breaking at 461 inch pounds. So all four thread repair kits that use metal inserts, the Easy Lock, HHIP, Time Cert, and Helicoil proved to be stronger than the bolt. JB Weld Original averaged 206 inch pounds before the threads let go. Up next, let's see what the failure load is for this test piece which has aluminum threads. This is a pretty simple setup with two hydraulic rams placed between two really thick pieces of steel. On the other end of this hydraulic line is a hydraulic pump. I'll keep adding pressure until we reach the failure load. If you plan to use a thread repair kit for a cylinder head or a part that experiences heavy loads, this next test will provide some great information. Fortunately, the bolt broke and it didn't strip out at about 1,000 PSI. Let's see how close copper can come to 1,000 PSI. Unfortunately, the repaired threads on a test piece began slipping at 0 PSI. And the threads on the second test piece also let go before the pressure moved past 0. And the needle barely moved past 0 PSI on a third test piece. And the Loctite Red Thread Locker performed much better than the copper at 150 PSI on the first test piece. The second test piece performed nearly as well as the first one at 140 PSI. And the Loctite gave up very close to 130 PSI on the third test piece. So pretty consistent results for the Loctite. And JB Weld did better than Loctite Thread Locker on the first test piece at 160 PSI. And JB Weld did quite a bit better on the second test piece at 425 PSI. And the JB Weld threads let go at 160 PSI on a third test piece. Testing HHIP. And the repaired threads are refusing to let go. At 1000 PSI the bolt is stretching and finally let go. As you can see the HHIP outheld the bolt. On a second test piece the bolt began stretching at 950 PSI before it finally let loose. On a third test piece the bolt began stretching at 1050 PSI. So the HHIP thread repair outlasted the bolt 3 out of 3 times. Even after the bolt breaking in the test piece the thread repair still looks to be in great shape. Testing Helicoil. Just like the HHIP, the Helicoil refused to give up, and the bolt began stretching at 1,175 PSI before it finally let go. And the bolt began stretching on a second test piece at 1,025 PSI before the bolt snapped. Once again, the Helicoil did very well on the third test piece, and the bolt finally broke at 1,000 PSI. The Helicoil thread repair still looks as good as new. Testing the Loctite thread repair epoxy. And the Loctite threads gave up at 160 PSI on the first test piece. And it didn't do quite as well on the second test piece at only 110 PSI. And the third test piece only made it to 75 PSI before the threads let go. So about 115 PSI on average for the Loctite. Testing Easy Lock. And the Easy Lock easily outlasted the bolt at 1000 PSI before the bolt finally snapped. And the second test piece did just as well at 1,050 PSI before the bolt let go. And the third test piece made it to 1,100 PSI before the bolt finally threw in the towel. The Easy Lock thread repair is still in great condition. Testing the time cert. And the time cert repair easily outlasted the bolt before making the bolt a projectile at 1,100 PSI. On the second test piece, the bolt launched at 1,075. And the third test piece finally let go at 1,025 PSI. The time cert thread repair is still looking great. So all of the metal thread insert kits performed very well outlasting the bolt 3 out of 3 times. For the other options tested, JB Weld did the best at 248 PSI on average. Up next, let's see which brand resists corrosion the best using this highly corrosive hydrogen peroxide vinegar and salt mix. It's been right at 24 hours, so let's check in and see how each one of these brands performed. And the Helicoil seems to have held up the best without any visible signs of corrosion. And the HHIP seems to have come in second place but it did fairly well with just a small amount of corrosion. The Easy Lock and the Time Cert have a little bit more corrosion than the other two brands and they seem to be about the same. When choosing a thread insert repair kit, one factor to consider is the size of the insert itself. The Helicoil and the HHIP may stretch a little when inserted but it's around 10 millimeters. The Time Cert has a slightly smaller diameter at 9.47. The Easy Lock has by far the largest diameter at almost 12 millimeters. I'm really impressed with all the metal thread insert repair kits. They all outperform the original aluminum threads. So the question is, which brand should you select for a repair? There's several factors to consider. Corrosion resistance, the size of the thread insert, and the price that you're willing to spend to have the threads repaired. All the videos in this channel are viewer suggested. If you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and I look forward to next time.